Well, metastomatism is quite a difficult thing to explain, but um, we have to do it because uh, in the end of the day, what we'll be saying is that diamonds grow in metasomatic reactions. And so uh, it's a very important part of uh, the story that we're telling. And um, the simple definition of uh, metasomatism is the change in composition by the introduction of a different fluid which reacts with the existing rock to form something new. Now that may be that it just changes the composition of the existing minerals or it may form new minerals. Um, but either way it's uh, triggered off by something new coming from inside and that's a fluid. The metasomatic fluids in the mantle introduce uh, minerals like uh, phlogopite and titanium. So there's lots of potassium, there's lots of titanium. There are um, also contrib major contributions from water. Uh, and uh, there are saline solutions and carbonatitic uh, solutions that also come into the reckoning. Firstly, diamonds form by metasomatic reactions, either in peridotite or eclogite in the main. And um, in addition to that, there are metasomatic events which uh, resorb the diamond uh, while it's being stored in the mantle. There are uh, also a number of metasomatic reactions which have no effect on the diamond, but one has to understand that it's a complicated situation that you're looking at and that the rocks that you're dealing with have undergone some changes in composition several times. In addition, uh, the diamond forming events can happen more than once in the same environment, in the same place in the mantle. So making diamonds is, in nature is all tied up with metasomatism. It also seems to be true that young diamond, which is the fibrous cuboid material that we've talked about elsewhere, um, that um, is also produced by metasomatic processes. So in, when it comes to diamond, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot we have to know about the metasomatic influences in the, in the mantle.